Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everyone is doing well and stuff. You know what? It just recently dawned on me. I've been on YouTube almost 11 years now and I've never made a square bill crankbait before. So I think it's about time I make one of these things. And I'm not just gonna make one, I'm gonna make 12 of these because why not? It's the pandemic and I have all the time in the world anyways, so might as well. So let's head out to the garage and start cutting some wood. For this project I decided to use wood that is fairly buoyant. So I had a nice uh, selection of western red cedar still in my garage, so I decided to use that. But first things first, I need to cut this into a more manageable chunks and strips. The design that I had in my mind initially was that I wanted to make this rather chunky. So I decided to cut these into strips that are 30 millimeters thick. Alrighty, so now that we have the cedar blocks uh, cut, or should I call them strips? I don't know, they're actually quite <laughs> square. <laughs> Um, anyways, I'm just going to use this little template to um, draw the outlines of my lure onto these uh, blocks, strips, whatever you want to call these. And now we're onto the bandsaw and I'm just going to cut a whole bunch of these shapes out and hopefully I won't lose any fingers, which is always a danger when using power tools. That actually reminds me of a time when I was actually still in school. I don't know if, you, if I ever told you guys this, but I'm actually a wood artisan by trade. and I think it was around year 2000, I think it was the second year of, um, of school for me and this girl in my class actually cut into her thumb with the, um, with the bandsaw and uh, not gonna lie, it was freaking nasty, I've never seen anything like that before. So definitely take your time with um, sharp powerful tools and don't rush anything and you'll be fine. Usually I tend to leave a little bit of extra wood on the pieces that I cut, especially if I'm doing a lot of them at the same time. It's just a little bit easier to make sure that they come out exactly the same. So I'm just going to get rid of the excess material with my disc sander. And next I'm going to draw in the center line and this is for me to help align the stencil that I'm going to be using later on to mark the upper profile and also when I do the sewing for the internal Y harness slot a little bit later on. If my memory serves me right, I've never actually showed how I make the upper profile stencil before so this is uh, a real treat for you guys. Anyways, I start off by folding a piece of paper in half. Now that the fold is done, I'm just going to start sketching out the profile of this uh, uh, particular crankbait. And I already knew in the beginning that I wanted it to be very thick, so that's what we're going to go for. Now I'm just going to fold the piece of paper in half again, and I'm just going to follow the outlines of this uh, profile and cut it out. Now that I have the upper profile stencil done, it's just a simple task of attaching it to the crankbait and tracing out the outlines. Making the eye sockets for this uh, uh, rather round or thick uh, lure is going to be kind of difficult to get accurately, so I decided this would be the perfect time to do this and mark out where I need to drill the holes. Also, at this point it made a lot of sense to me to mark out where I need to cut the slot for the swimming lip. And I'm just going to use this template to um, mark out where I need to do the cut and what angle it should be on. So at this point it's a bit too early still to uh, drill the eye sockets themselves. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill a pilot hole for them and I'm going to go all the way through the body of the crankbait. By the way, this reminds me of something. In my previous video, which was actually surprisingly popular, uh, thanks for that, um, somebody mentioned that I shouldn't use gloves when I do drilling, which is kind of true, but at the same time it's uh, minus 10 in the garage and I want to keep warm, so that's why you see me wearing gloves when I do any kind of work in the garage now. 
So next we're going to do the wire slot and I'm just going to use a regular old saw to do the deed and previously I always actually cut the whole lure in half and made sort of like an indentation inside the, the lure to accept the wire because it looks nicer but I decided to go traditional this time around and just uh, cut the slot because this is actually the easiest way of going about this and also uh, I've never done it on the channel before. Now we're on to the bandsaw and I'm just going to cut the slot for the swimming lip. And while I'm still at the bandsaw I'm just going to cut the upper profile as well. And try not to lose any fingers. As you can see I left a little bit of extra again to make sure that when I actually start um, sanding this all of the pieces that I make all 12 of them will be almost exactly the same almost because obviously I'm not a robot so there's gonna be a little bit of variation there but I'm gonna try to get as close as I possibly can now that I have all the crankbaits profiled I'm just gonna result into good old manual labor and use uh, this utility knife to get rid of the excess material and start making these a bit more rounder Now that I'm fairly close to the um, final shape of these uh, crankbaits, I'm just going to fin finalize everything with uh, some sandpaper and uh, use some good old elbow grease to make these things nice and smooth. So now that the lures are completely rounded off, I can start making the eye sockets for these things. And I'm sure that there are a few people out there that are going to cringe because I'm holding the lure in my hand while drilling. Um, apparently this is a bit, very big no-no. <laughs> in some circles, but uh, fear not, I'm a professional. Now we're gonna do a lot more manual labor again. And I'm just going to bend the wire harness that's gonna be placed inside the crankbait. And this wire is um, uh, one millimeter thick, in case somebody wonders. And it's also spring steel, which is uh, my preferable uh, type of uh, steel wire that um, I use for anything really. Uh, stainless steel of course and um, yeah I'm just gonna leave this clip up here because I don't really know how to explain this. It's pretty self-explanatory uh, if you ask me. So now that I've bent all the wires for my crankbaits, I can start gluing them in. And I'm just going to use 5 minute epoxy to do it. And what you can also see here is that I, I've cut a whole bunch of these um, cedar strips that I'm then going to place inside the grooves. Uh, these won't actually go very deeply, they're very superficial and they're going to act sort of like as a plug. Um, this is a very traditional way of making a crankbait. And especially if you happen to come from Finland, like I do. Now, I don't know for a fact that this is the reason why they used to use this method, but I think it is because it's much easier to sand off wood than it is to sand off epoxy, which makes perfect sense to me. Alrighty, now that the epoxy has cured, I can start get rid of these cedar strips. And first off, I'm gonna just gonna use my knife and we're gonna move on to some sanding paper later on to make everything nice and smooth. Next thing on the agenda list is we're gonna weigh these crankbaits. And sometimes you actually don't need any weight inside of your crankbaits, but this time around I feel like since these are really round and from a very buoyant wood, 
I'm definitely gonna need some weight inside of these. So I'm just gonna drill a bunch of holes here and I'm gonna uh, place a piece of lead inside, which is gonna be seven grams in case somebody wonders. Now that I've drilled all of the weight holes, I can start filling them out with uh, some Bondo. Next order of business is to seal these um, crankbaits and I'm just going to use um, true coat epoxy to, to do it. And the nice thing about um, cedar is that it actually sucks in a lot of the epo epoxy uh, fairly easy, especially if you use uh, coarse sandpaper like I did. So I actually did this um, process two times. Alright, now it's time to give these uh, crankbaits a little bit of character and start painting them. I'm gonna start with black and I'm going to highlight a few areas here on the cheek and on the back. I kind of wanted to paint these completely, but then I figured, you know what, I kind of want to leave a little bit of the beautiful grain showing. So I'm not going to paint these completely. Next we're going to paint the scales and I'm going to use gold to paint through this, um, I think this came from a bag of fruits, I'm not 100% sure <laughs> to be perfectly honest, um, but that's what I kind of remember. Anyways, I'm just going to use this to emulate the scales. Next I'm going to paint the belly and I'm just going to use white for that. And at this point I really wasn't completely sure yet what I was going to paint. But, you know, having a white background is always a good idea to have anyways, even if you don't know what you're going to do. Because it will make other colors pop a little bit easier, like let's say uh, yellow or, for example, orange. Next I'm going to start painting the head details and uh, there's actually a video about how I make these stencils in case somebody wonders how the heck do you even make those things. Um, I, th I think I'm going to leave it somewhere in the, maybe in the, in the video itself, um, make a little thingy there or I think maybe I'll just leave a link in the description box or something. I don't know yet. It'll be there somewhere. Alright, next I'm going to paint a blood trail and since the natural um, color of the wood uh, is rather dark, I need to make sure that the color that I want to uh, paint here is going to actually show up. So I'm going to paint the background white first.
I mentioned earlier that I wasn't really sure what I was going to paint um, earlier. But when I got to this point, I was like, you know what, I feel like this is going to be some sort of uh, old school looking uh, muted color. So I've, I decided to uh, spray some uh, olive green on the back. At this point of the whole painting process, I decided it would be a good time to tie in the uh, mouth and the belly color a little bit closer together, just to make sure that everything looks a little bit more nicer. Now it's time to move on to the fin. And like before, I need to make sure that the color that I paint here, which is red, is going to actually show up. So I'm just going to paint the background white first. Then we're gonna move on to the fin rays, which are gonna be painted with black. By the way, I think I need to mention here that the paint has actually been reduced by 50% here uh, while I do the fin rays. Uh, this is just to make sure that the um, fin rays are gonna uh, end up being a little bit see-through, but not quite. It's a very delicate balance that uh, you just have to try it out yourself to see what works best for you. And one last thing I'm going to paint here, and that is actually the mouth. Uh, I haven't done this um, actually too many times. Uh, this is just something that I started to do recently, and I think it looks kind of cool. Um, makes the whole look of the lure look a bit more kind of angrier in a way. And I don't know why, but this look kind of reminds me of uh, this um, album cover by this uh, Swedish band called Armageda. Uh, the album is uh, Final War Approaching, and the guy in the cover looks exactly like this, uh, this lure, uh, to me at least. Anyway, um, one last thing I need to do before I can start clear coating these things with epoxy, uh, that is the glue in the eyes. And I'm just going to use 5 minute epoxy to do it. So now that the eyes have been uh, glued on, I can start epoxying and give these uh, lures a nice clear coat. And still I'm using the same epoxy that I used before, uh, which is True Coat Epoxy. And I ended up uh, clear coating these three times to give them a nice shiny finish. While the epoxy was curing, I headed to the bandsaw once again and started cutting these uh, lips for my crankbaits. Once I had cut all the lips, I headed to my disc sander once more and rounded off the uh, very edge of the lip. And I don't think I mentioned this, but uh, the lip uh, material that I used is a Lexan and it's uh, two millimeters thick. I left the crankbaits to cure one whole day to make sure that I wouldn't get any uh, nasty fingerprints on them, uh, which is always a danger when uh, clear coating stuff uh, during the winter time because it tends to be a bit colder and takes a little longer for epoxy to cure. And I wanted to make sure that uh, that doesn't happen. So next I'm just going to uh, glue in the lips. 
and I'm shockingly using 5 minute epoxy again. Alright, it's time for the traditional swim test. And I gotta say I'm fairly happy how this uh, model turned out. It has a nice tight wiggle, as you can see. And also, uh, surprisingly enough, I didn't have to tune a single one of these uh, crankbaits, which is something that doesn't happen very often. But, uh, you know, I'll take it. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And also, you can uh, nowadays support me on Patreon if you want. Um, you're gonna get um, exclusive footage and also access to um, my videos before anyone else gets to see them. Um, I'm still gonna leave a um, small clip here in the end to show off all of the baits that I made, all of the color patterns. Um, but yeah, that's all for me now. See you guys in the next one.